Welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker Shop update for January 20th, 2017. I'm Shannon Rogers, your host. Here's what's happening in my shop this week. I'm tired, very tired. If you didn't catch it last weekend, I built this bookcase. This is a bookcase from Christopher Schwartz's Anarchist Design book. I built the whole thing live on YouTube in three sessions. Comes out to about six hours of content and pretty much built everything on camera. I uh, ended up cutting three of the six dados off camera because you just didn't need to see that repetition. Glued up a couple of panels off camera, but really every single step of this build, you guys got to see live on YouTube. Now I've taken all three of those, combined them into a playlist and posted them here on site in their own blog. Or of course the playlist is available on YouTube as well. And I urge you to check it out. Feedback was really good. It seemed like people really enjoyed it, but again, they are live recordings, so there's a couple tech gremlins here and there that pop up, the sound crops in and out in one of the videos, and there's a little bit of kind of me futzing about in the beginning of one of them, so feel free to fast forward by all means. But right now, I am applying finish to this. I did not apply the finish to the case because, well, what fun is that live, <laughs> watching someone apply finish? So I am using um, milk paint. I'm using General Finish's milk paint to be exact, Cypress Green, be painting the exterior of the case, but I'm leaving the interior and all the shelves in natural color. I'll be finishing those in a varnish, specifically General Finishes Endurovar. Now, I'm not going to show you the Endurovar application because if you've seen one varnish application, you've seen them all. If you really want to see it, I applied an, an Endurovar finish in the picnic style dining table that I finished up last summer. So feel free to check out that playlist and watch that particular episode of applying Endurovar. It's really straightforward, really easy to brush on, beautiful finish, lovely self-leveling thing. So um, I first of all, I just want to say thanks to everybody who came out to the live sessions, asked questions, just made it a lot of fun. It was like hanging out with a couple hundred people in my shop. Well, that actually doesn't sound like fun. Sounds awful crowded, but you get the idea. It was a lot of fun and I'm definitely gonna do this more. I'll probably be trying to do one of these builds live at least one more time this year. If I'm really ambitious, I'll try to do it once a quarter, but don't hold me to that. But one thing I am gonna do, I'm gonna be replacing one of these shop updates, what you're watching right now, I'll be replacing one each month with a live stream. Now I'm still working out some of the details, more than likely it will be on a Thursday evening, probably around eight o'clock Eastern, not quite sure there yet, but the thought is I'll have maybe a demonstration to cover, maybe just do some open Q&A, but really just kind of play with the whole live method because it's just so much fun to be able to have a conversation, a real-time conversation with folks. So look forward to that in the future. There'll be uh, one live shop update every single month, and I'll certainly be uh, advertising that when it happens. If you're on my email list, you'll get plenty of notice, or just keep watching these updates, and I'll be notifying you, hey, next week's gonna be live. So let me uh, just walk you briefly through what I'm doing here with the milk paint finish. You want to make sure you stir this product thoroughly because, well, it's just pigment in solution. So unless you can get the pigment mixed in and dissolved evenly, you're going to end up with really weird color streaks. Now to get this to flow out a little bit easier, I'm going to dilute it by 20%. So it's always nice, these uh, measuring cups here, I can very precisely gauge that 20%. So filled that up to the 10. Filled it to the eight with paint and then just added water till it got to the 10. So 20%. <laughs> and that 20% really kind of gets this thing flowing. It's gonna mean that I'm gonna need more coats here to get it right, but I'd much rather have it flow than kind of clump up on the surface and leave brush marks and all that nasty stuff. Now, obviously I'm not painting the entire thing. So I do need to spend some time prepping and taping off the various joints. In my case, I'm gonna paint the sides and the leading edges of the case, as well as the kick plate. I'm not going to paint the fronts of the shelves. So I do need to tape those off right where they meet the case. Now the dado itself, that will be painted. So it actually works out nicely because I can just tape across the joint and it covers up the shelf past the dado. I'm definitely no brushing expert. Most of my brushing experience comes from brushing on really thinned out clear coat finishes that level all by themselves. That's one of the reasons that I thin out this milk paint. You can even thin it more than 20% to get it to really flow. 
But in this particular operation, because I'm essentially painting vertical surfaces, I don't want it too runny because then it's going to start running down and dripping off the bottom edge. So I do keep it a little bit more viscous and, you know, in the, my, in the back of my head the whole time, I'm thinking Mr. Miyagi, side to side, side to side as I paint it on. But again, I'm sure there are people out there that have much better brushing technique than I, but if you see brush strokes at first, don't freak out. The thinning that we did will allow that stuff to level. And you'll notice that first of all, this dries really quickly and it starts to take on kind of a chalky look. And once it does that, you'll notice that those brush strokes have just disappeared. So don't get worried too much about the brush strokes, but at the same time, this is a painted finish and you're liable to see a little bit of brushing on here. It's not a clear coat we're going for. So cut yourself some slack and just relax. But the cool thing is, is anywhere where the paint drips onto the unpainted sections, I can just come back and clean that up later using a chisel or a block plane or something like that. I'm gonna apply at least two coats of this paint. I might go with three. In my experience in the past working with this paint, the second coat is really all I need. Then I'll top coat it using the clear coat finish that I'm gonna use on the shelves. In this case, I'll be using General Finishes Enduravar. So that's it for me this week, folks. I can tell you for the first live version of the shop update, I'm gonna be showing a demonstration of the dado or stair saw that you saw me use to cut some of these dados. I got a fantastic setup tip from a viewer on YouTube on how to reposition the fence. So I'm gonna, I've tried that out a couple times. It works fantastic. It makes the setup of the dado saw that much easier. So I'll be demonstrating that in the first live version of the shop update. And don't forget, Snowpocalypse, save 30% off everything in the hand tool school. Hurry, because you've only got about 24 hours before it goes away. We'll see you next week, folks.